In this video, we're going to look at the Arrange options in PowerPoint. And you can see here I have a PowerPoint presentation on the topic of animation in the classroom. And I have several slides on that topic. But here on the second slide, I would like to arrange the elements of what could be an animation. And I'd like to put them on this slide in a way that makes some sense. So I've just gone in to Insert, Online Pictures, and I've searched for a series of pictures like clouds, mountains, etc. And then I've clicked to insert them into this PowerPoint presentation and onto the slide. And you can see it's just a jumbled mess. Now, of course, I could just click and drag and put things where I want them to be. And in many cases, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. But there are some arrange options on the home tab, home ribbon. In the drawing group, you can go to arrange, and this can be very helpful. For example, let's say I want the mountain to be at the center of the slide. I could select the mountain, go to arrange, position objects, align. I could align center, go back, arrange, align, align middle. So now it's in the dead center of this slide. So that's just one example of how useful this can be. Now let's try something a little different. Let's say with these clouds, I don't want them to be dead center. What if instead I want them to be perfectly spaced apart from each other? And not only that, but I would like a third cloud as well. So I just copy pasted to make a third cloud. And what I'll do is I'll drag this cloud all the way over here to the right, and then these other two are bunched together. So now I can click on one of the clouds, hold the shift key, and then click on the other two clouds. All three are selected. Now I can go to the arrange group and choose a line, distribute horizontally. So you'll notice that when I did that, it didn't change the position of the last cloud, nor did it change the position of the first cloud. All it did was space the second one perfectly between the first and the last clouds. Now, this becomes even more useful the more clouds that you have, or the more items that you're trying to space equally that you have. So in this case, I've got lots of clouds, and I'm putting the first one exactly where I want it to be, I'll put the last one exactly where I want it to be, and then I'll hold the Shift key, select all of the clouds that I want to be able to affect, hopefully I get them all, and then go to the Arrange button, go to Align, and now distribute horizontally. I click, and now they're all perfectly spaced horizontally. It looks like I may have missed one of the clouds, but you get the idea. Now let's try it the other way. What if we align and distribute vertically? That time it took the cloud that was at the top and the cloud that was at the bottom and left them alone, but the ones in between, it distributed perfectly from top to bottom. So arrange, align is very helpful when you're designing a slide in PowerPoint. It can help you align everything to the dead center, and there's the one that escaped me. It can also help you align vertically, so to the middle of the screen, or in this case, to each other. And it can also help you distribute equally. Now, of course, there's also arrange, align left or right, that will put it at the far left or the far right of your slide. So those other align options can be useful as well. Same with top and bottom. Now if you have more than one item selected, sometimes that works a little differently. So I'm selecting this cloud and this cloud, and then I go to Arrange, Align, Align Top. It put it at the top. This one was already at the top, so it stayed there. So you may need to practice with this a little bit, when I chose a line left that time, you'll notice that they didn't both go to the far left. The one that was most to the left, that was the standard, and the other one moved to a line with that. So that's why when I have the cloud down here, and I select it, and then I also select this cloud, and I go to arrange, align. If I say align top, it'll pick the one that's closest to the top, and then make them align. So it takes a little bit of practice to really understand what's about to happen when you use the align options. Personally, I just love align middle, align center, and distribute horizontally and vertically. Those are the ones I use the most. Next, let's look at a couple of other arrange options that we have. You'll notice that my climber here is in the wrong order on this slide. I must have brought this climber in first and then the mountain after because you can see the mountains in front of the climber and that doesn't make a lot of sense. 
So to fix that, I can use the Arrange button. I select the Mountain Climber, go to Arrange, and I can choose Bring to Front. Now, the Mountain Climber is in front of the clouds, the tree, the rocks, the sun, everything. Now, sometimes that's not exactly what you want. Instead of bringing to front, you may just want to bring forward. So not all the way to the front, but one step forward. You can also do similar things with send to back or send backward. So I would like to send the climber backward so that she's behind the tree, but in front of the mountain and in front of the rock. Let's try that. So I select the mountain climber. I go to arrange. Instead of send to back, that would go all the way to the back. I don't want to do that. I just say send backward. It doesn't seem like it did anything, but it did. Let's try it again. Send backward. So after I've sent backward a few times, what should happen is that tree should then be in front. And there it is. So now the tree is in front of the climber. But look, so is the rock. Now another way, probably a faster way that I could have done that, is I could have brought the tree forward. But at this point, I want to send the rock back. So I click on the rock. There on the Home tab, Home ribbon, there's the Arrange group, and I can send the rock backward. And I'll have to do that a few times as well. Okay, there we go. So now that establishes where the rock is, where the tree is. The tree is in front of the rock, and the climber is between the tree and the rock. So those are some great features to help you layer a scene or layer a PowerPoint slide so that certain things are on top of other things or underneath, or I should say in front of or behind other things on the slide. So now that that's done, I can put these characters where I want them to be. Maybe I'll resize the mountain, make it a little bit bigger or a lot bigger. And then let's go back to the clouds and give them some attention. Let's say I've spaced those clouds out the way I want them to be. And now I want to be able to move them all to the left, just a little bit. Of course, I could do that each one separately. Click and drag, click and drag this one and this one. But a lot of times it's easier to group things like this that go together. Now to really do this effectively, I need to delete a few of the clouds. I put in way too many clouds. Okay, so I've got these three clouds and maybe I want them to look something like that. I think actually before I group them, I want to click on Arrange and choose Rotate. And I'll just rotate not left 90 degrees or right 90 degrees. That would make for a very vertical cloud. And of course, I could use this arrow as well to adjust the rotation. But instead, I'm just going to go here to Arrange, and I'll go to Rotate. And in addition to rotating 90 degrees left and right, notice that there is an option to flip vertically and flip horizontally. And these are great options, especially when you're reusing an image twice. It can be repetitive and kind of boring to have the same image, but if you flip one or more than one, it can change the look a little bit and make it more interesting. So I'll flip this one vertically. All right, so now there's a little bit of variety in the clouds. Not a ton, but some variety. So having done that, I'm going to select each of the clouds. I'm holding the Shift key and clicking on all the clouds. Then I'll go to Arrange and I'll choose Group. Now that I've done that, look, they're all considered to be one object, so I can move them as one. And it saves a lot of time, it makes things very convenient as you're designing a slide in PowerPoint. Now what if you ever decide that you would like to break those apart and have them not be a group? Well, select the item, the clouds in this case, go to Arrange, and there's an option to ungroup, and now I can click away and then back on one of the clouds and that way I can maybe provide a little more variety with their position. And then I could select them all again, holding the Shift key and clicking to select everything I want to group. Going back to Arrange, I can choose Group, and now I can move them all at once. Now this is another example of when order is important. I guess the clouds could be in front of the mountain, but probably not the tree. And I think it makes more sense for them to be behind the mountain. So I can just select the clouds, go to Arrange, and I could send them backward one step at a time, or I could just send to the back, all the way to the back, and then move them exactly where I want them to be. So I hope that you'll look on the Home tab, Home ribbon, and look for the Arrange button that's on the drawing group. 
Look for that anytime you're using lots of elements on one particular slide. Maybe it's pictures plus text plus videos or clip art or things like that. But anytime you have a lot of elements on the screen at once, it's a good idea to look at that arrange button and see what it can do to help you arrange things on the screen the way you want them to be. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, click the bell next to the subscribe button. If you do, you'll be notified whenever I post another video. And if you want to support my channel, become a supporter of mine on Patreon. You'll see a link to that in the description below.